Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business, and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up, guys. It is Wednesday morning. Oh, my goodness. It's hump day already. Uh, tomorrow's Halloween, so make sure you got your candy ready and be ready for some tricking and treating. Um... And we are at the midpoint of the season. Our players have actually the day off after having a light practice yesterday. Michael Bennett had his first practice with the Dallas Cowboys. And it appears that he's already fitting in really, really nicely. Demarcus Lawrence has kind of uh, welcomed him and says that he's got hot boy traits. Oh, God, hot boy. Hot boy. I, I hate that freaking name. I'm sorry. It does not instill fear in me. I like Purge Squad a lot better, but until we really see a completely defensive domination, <laughs> something that literally destroys a team, we're going to keep that on the, the side burner. But I'm glad that, he fit in, that he's fitting in and feeling at home because I think that's the difference maker. I think that's a guy who can just kind of help turn up that defensive pass rush up just a little just a little notch with a little edge of craziness that will help you get there a little further. Um, Cowboys tried um, to make a deal for Adams. You know, they're constantly, as Stephen Jones says, player acquisition is a 365-day-a-year job. But in the end, Two number ones was too damn much. And I think the Jets actually made a mistake because now you got a guy who's kind of like, you know, the fuck? You were going to trade me. You guys told me that I wasn't on the trade block and things, and you went behind my back and tried to make a deal and stuff. So they've definitely poisoned the waters. And sometimes you can get too damn greedy, and it hurts you. The Redskins are definitely in this boat right now because, you know, they had some deals in place, but they wanted too damn much. And instead of being able to say, hey, hey you know, we got a first-round pick or maybe a second-round pick for Trent Williams, he's unhappy, he's gone, now you got nothing. He's back. Probably won't play at all this year because he's going to have some kind of ailment or something that's going to prevent him from being able to practice. He's going to get another year closer. He's going to be a complete distraction. And so if your goal is about winning, you got to move him. And now teams are going to know that you're desperate. So, you know, you, you sometimes can make mistakes in trying to get too much. And on the flip side... You can make mistakes by giving too much. And the Cowboys, well, giving up two first rounds was too much. They were talking about a first and a fourth. And I'm not sure I wanted to give up that much. I mean, that's a lot. Um, and unfortunately, or fortunately, or however you want to look at it, once the Cowboys do something and it works out, you just imagine that, oh, that's going to work out. So let's just keep tra trading number one draft picks and, you know, we're going to be golden. No, it doesn't always work that way. Because sometimes you bring in guys that you think are going to be the difference maker, and it ends up blowing up in your face. You don't think Cleveland's got buyer's remorse right now for Odell Beckham? You don't think they do? You don't think the Jets have buyer's remorse for Le'Veon Bell? They tried to move him yesterday, and with the salary that he's getting paid and his production, ain't nobody paying that. So relax mm -hmm. on the Jamal Adams, you know, not getting him. Relax. We're okay. But what I actually want to talk about, because it is a Dallas Cowboys off day, I want to go back a little bit. I am constantly beat down with people that tell me that I'm an idiot. And I am an idiot. I'll be the first to tell you that. Um, but they're just, they laugh a lot of times when I put something out there. And one of the things I put out there, and it actually started... From the very first time I did a video about Dak Prescott, I said Dak Prescott, back when he was in college, that he's a lot like Russell Wilson. I said in the offseason about the power of four, and that's where we started out. I, I got my shirt, power of four. Oh, 
Nope, that's the wrong ones. I don't have them right here. Well, you guys have seen the powers of four. I've got some of them that are over there anyway. But the power of four. When I said this, people said, you're crazy. Dak sucks. I said, fourth year of quarterbacks is generally speaking when they take off. Apparently, except Carson Wentz. We kept getting told that Carson Wentz had a high ceiling that Dak Prescott, you know, he doesn't have that high of a ceiling. And I said, no, they're wrong. I said, what happens is, there's a normal maturation of a quarterback. You can see it in most quarterbacks. First year, sometimes they come out, play like gangbusters and stuff, like, you know, you see Baker Mayfield. And then the second year is the sophomore slump sometimes. You know, they kind of go downhill. You know, they kind of come back down to earth. Defensive coordinators have a book out on them and things, and they start throwing more stuff at them. You know, the offenses get more complicated. And a team that was successful sometimes, because of playing tougher schedules, also makes it more difficult. So you see the progression go down. The third year is the writing of the ship, and usually the fourth year is the year that they take off. And I said that. And for me, I said, this year is the pow about the power of four. Dak Prescott, fourth round draft pick. His mother's birthday, the fourth. His number, four. His season, the fourth year. And that's where we, we got a power four shirt. We got it autographed by all you great fans, and we gave it to Dak. Because I believe in the fourth year. Uh, we got cowboy haters out there and, you know, people that will tell you that Dak Prescott, he's a tier three quarterback, as they were saying in pro football focus, that, you know, he's average at best. You know, they had him in preseason rankings, 18th or 17th, you know, something like that. And, and, it, and again, they kept listing and saying he's a tier three quarterback. And I kept telling you guys that this year you're going to see major improvements. You're going to see Russell Wilson like. And when I say things like that, people turn around and they just laugh. You're crazy. How dare you compare him to Russell Wilson? But here's the thing. Let's take a look at Dak's numbers right now here. This is actually kind of amazing because I, I, I pulled this out before and people kept saying, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. But when you look at what Dak did his first year, 3,600 yards, okay? Great rookie season, 23 touchdowns, okay? 13-3 um, record. Um, then the next year, 3,300 yards, um, 22 touchdown passes. 2018, he got up to 3,800, right? It's parallel to what Russell Wilson did. Russell Wilson... What up? Okay. Russell Wilson, his first year, 3,100, 33, 34. And again, touchdown passes in the mid-20s, 26, 26, 20. But it was that fourth year that he ended up getting 600 yards more passing. He busted the 4,000 mark. Had 34 TDs. Now, the misconception on... Russell Wilson is, well, he's been to Super Bowl, two Super Bowls. Yeah, but it wasn't per se just Russell Wilson and his yardage. He was a key pony to it. But they also had beast mode in that running game and a number one defense to go with it. That actually helped it. So you have perception and reality. Don't get me wrong. And, and, and Seattle Seahawks fans, don't come jumping at me. But I'm saying is Russell Wilson is a much better quarterback today now than he was when they won the Super Bowl. And it's because the team had to evolve because they no longer had that bellwether back in a beast mode. They didn't have that same defense. Now more of that is on his shoulders, and he's taking that load. And so as you look at this parallel, Russell Wilson and Dak Prescott, they're right there the same. They really are. And this is where the power of four is. Now currently... We go to NFL stats. Now, I know what people are going to say. Well, Dak is all the way down here in yardage with only 21, 23. He's not up there with, like, Jared Goff. He's got 2,300 yards. Well, Jared Goff's got one more game, too. 
um, as well as Aaron Rodgers, as well as Philip Rivers, as well as Andy Dalton as well. And Andy Dalton, FYI, has been benched. Um, and so is Tom Brady. So once he gets another game underneath of him, he'll be back up there. But if you doubt what I'm saying, um, the only person who's actually averaging more yards passing per game, 311 yards. Pat Mahomes, Matty Ice at 310, and then there's Dak Prescott at 303. So currently, Dak Prescott is on pace to throw for 1,000 yards more than he has any other season. He's looking at about 34 TD passes. I'm sorry, 34 total touchdown passes. Not bad. Not bad, considering. Now, I know a lot of you will still say Dak Prescott is not that great of a quarterback, this, that, and the other. You know, are you still a tier three? No. Okay, you're, you're just an idiot that just hates him then. You have to go by and you have to honestly admit that Dak Prescott has gotten better from last year where he was playing outstanding to where he is now being one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. And it's time to start recognizing that. Now, we'll see what happens over the course of the next nine games, but I am still betting on the power of four. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, I got some work to do as we get ready to go to Puerto Rico on Saturday. Thank you, everybody, for getting us over 1,000 uh, subscribers. Um, actually trying to live stream, but YouTube um, keeps saying that I'm not eligible for it, so I'm trying to figure out if it just has to catch up in their system. And... Um, you know, maybe it'll take a day or two and we'll be able to live stream on that channel. But thank you, everybody, who have subscribed to that channel. I really and truly appreciate that. And we're going to continue to work hard to make sure that you guys have some great knowledge, great videos and things about the Dallas Cowboys' life and, of course, home improvements. And I'll see you guys soon.